All right. So we are on 2C.4. Um, as far as 2C.4 goes, it is, again, about just describing and manipulating. So hopefully it's not too terrible. Okay. So up first, we have, um, we kind of did a problem similar to this yesterday before we left. When we first started talking about vertical translations, um, transformations, uh, now we're doing a vertical dilation. So it says when graphing log functions, you, in this form of y equals log base b, x to the k, we can show that the power property y equals k is congruent, right? That turns it into a vertical dilation of the parent function, okay? So when you have that, you now can describe what's taking place, how it's been changing, what's being altered. So we're going to start here with g of x equals log base 2 x squared for x greater than 0, which is what our domain is. Um, and we want to apply the power rule. So if we're applying the power rule here, that means that this right here, I can take my power and it becomes my coefficient. That's the power rule. So if g of x equals 2 log base 2x. Okay. So now it's just in regular transformation form. I can tell you how it transformed and what happened, right? Um, we know that that two means it's a what? A stretch. It's a vertical stretch, right? It's a vertical compression. Um, it's stretched by two, by a factor of two. On your AP test, they are okay if you just say vertical dilation by two or vertical dilation by one half. That's because dilation means I'm either getting big or I'm getting small. Does that make sense? So if you don't want to remember stretch and compression, the word that you can use in its place is dilation. Okay. Um, so we're going to graph. So G of X. So the first thing we're going to do is graph our parent function. Our parent function is log base two of X. So when I'm graphing log base two of X, keeping in mind, it's going to always be, I'm going to do a little table right here. So for X, F of X, we're at one, zero. Then we're at four, two, eight, three. I skipped one. Two, one. Okay. I have the C's. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. So, what's, what is G of X going to look like then? What do we, what do we know is, is happening? So, Multiplying by two. So our g of x table, our x's aren't changing our y's. And I'm multiplying each y times two. So now we're at zero, two, four, and six. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna graph each one of these. I'm gonna graph my f of x. I go to one, zero, I'm gonna go to two, one, four, two, and eight. Three, remember there is a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, because that's why x is greater than zero. And I'm going to do my far best to connect all these points. Concentrate, concentrate. You're almost there. Yeah, no, it's, um, x equals zero because x well, for all, for all logs, it starts at zero. All right, now we're going to do G of X. G of X, we're still at uh, one, zero, right? But we're now at two, two, so two, two. We're now at four, four. We're now at eight, six. So it looks like. I am fairly proud of myself. These both look pretty legit, in my opinion. Um, yep. Don't be haters. Okay. We're going to write it in a formal sentence. 
according to AP Calculus. Are we ready to write our formal sentence? So normally you would just tell me the graph was stretched by a factor of two, correct? We're gonna to paraphrase it as to how now that I know precal says it once in written. So it says as x increases. y values are a vertical dilation by a factor of two. So this is the formal definition. So the rule that is being applied here is No. My x's stayed the same, but what happened? My twos doubled. My twos doubled. My y's doubled. Thank you. You know what I mean. All right. How do we feel about using the power, the power property to describe a transformation? Okay. Let's try another one. So now it says use the change of x property. Um, so log b of x equals log a over x and log a log base a x over log a log base a b. I can talk. Okay, so change of base rule. All right, where a is greater than zero, a cannot equal one to show that this vertical dilation, uh, this is a vertical dilation of the function log base two of x. So the first thing it wants us to do is to rewrite this using our log properties. So we're gonna rewrite g of x, and we're gonna rewrite it using the log property, log change of base property. So when we're writing that, it equals log, hold on. Oh, it's to this one, not F of it's G of X. Sorry. I don't understand why we're just not shifting it to the right. Okay. So if I wanted to write this in change of base, it would become log of x divided by log of 2. Agree? This is the same thing. When you have a number in the numerator, it's the value that's being multiplied. When you have a number in the denominator, it's the value that's being divided. Agree? So they can be separated. So when I separate these two, it becomes 1 over log of 2 times log of x. Okay, and the reason why they want us to do this is that then we can show then and therefore all log functions are vertical dilation are a vertical dilation of each other. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna write this. Each other. This is why I'm not an English teacher. Okay, so this is the reason why this is happening is because if I use change of base formula, um, I can manipulate it to be any base, right? It can both be log base two now. It can both be log base three, but ultimately they're going to always be a change of base for each other. I'm in a relationship between each other. I can, they're all just one big, very close knit function. Logs are very close knit. Um, you can create basically any log from another log is what this is concluding. But when you're describing what took place here, if I have log base two of X and I have log base two X minus one, is it okay if I create a table right here? 
to me, I like to start off with the table. So f of x. Your f of x is, depends on your tubes. The best way to do this is to list out what you're counting by, starting with um, your zero. So if I have log base two, that means I'm doubling every time, right? So it'd be zero, two, four, eight, right? Does that make sense? So you're asking um, two to what power gives me zero? One. Two to what power gives me two? Two. Two to the, two, wait, that's not right. Yeah, I thought it was eight. I skipped something. I skipped the whole number, guys. Zero, one. Fudge sickles. I'm fixing it. One, two. It's the same table. We're creating the same table. Yeah. Three. There we go. Sorry. Where are we at? Two to the one is one. Two to the two is four. Two to the eight. Two to three is eight. Found it. Found myself. Oh. Same out. I haven't switched anything. I said, I don't know where I was going with that. My brain. Blame it on the Benadryl I took. Sound like a good idea to feel better. No. All right, so g of x. So that means that g of x here, x minus one. Are my y's changing? No, my y's aren't changing. What's changing? Your x's, your x's are shifting. So my y's are still gonna be zero, one, two, and three. But my x's for this are gonna be what's different. Does that make sense? I'm gonna have to add, x's are liars. So each x is gonna have to add one. But my y's are going to stay the same. There is no manipulation to my y's, only to my x's. So for g of x, we're now at 2, 0. We're now at 3, 1. We're now at 5, 2. And we're now at 9, 3. Because they shifts also did my asymptote. So my asymptote used to be at 0. Where is it at now? 1. And this is my. Wait, so you do not want to graph it? I didn't feel like it. We already graphed it once. It's the same graph on example number five. So if you want, oh, so if you want to graph it, you totally can because it's the exact same one. All right. Okay. So describe it. What what is our transformation? Let's try to write it as mature pre calculus calculus teacher students. Who wants to lead it? We'll start with the boss. It starts with the S. Look at the other one. There we go. Y values stay the same. Y values. Oh, Y values stay the same. X Y values. Wait, Y values. No, wait, y values stay the same, right? Y values stay, yeah. As X increases, Y values increase by one. I was like, we forgot a piece in there. Wait, no, 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 no. I thought, we told y values values are I thought X values are increasing. X increases by one unit, right? Yeah. I said I forgot to write that in there with the X's. Yes. I said I thought it was going to be as X. X there we go. Yes. Oh. As X value as X increases by one unit, Y values. It got funky on us. Y values remain the same. Do y'all think it's necessary to say same from the parent function or same? They get the gist, right? Let's write our rule. What is our rule? 
There you go. Perfect. All right. The last part here is now putting it all together, fully describing the transformations, what they look like, what happens, uh, all of your transformation, fully describing your transformations, and then defining all the major attributes. So our domain, our um, the range, our asymptotes, intercepts, they run exactly the same except your base. So remember natural log is their basis E, okay? Common log means your basis 10. All right, so you have seven to do and then we'll check back. But right now at seven, you're going from beginning to end, finding the domain, yes. E is your, yes. Yep, that's why I wrote log base E of X. All right, if you struggle, I give you permission to graph to help you learn how to analyze it. So if you're struggling visualizing on your own, you can use E. Yeah, I'm to the to the Don't touch it if you're eating. Don't touch it. 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 Don't tou